Hello. Uh, we're into um, part two of um, God and plagues, talking about God and plagues. And of course, um, one of the reasons this is significant and relevant is that the world is currently uh, in a pandemic um, called COVID. So, um, and that's been for the last year and a half, approximately, of the time that we're talking now. Um, so that's one of the reasons it's so relevant is talking about God and plagues because surely I think anybody who's a questioning kind of person, a curious person, has questions about, you know, how did the world get into this situation? So I mean, you can look in the natural and say, oh, well, this is where we think it came from and all that kind of thing. But I think um, uh, Christian believers, um, <clears throat> we should look for spiritual answers and not just natural ones when something as major and as big as this happens especially when jesus actually prophesied deadly disease he prophesied pestilence which means deadly disease uh in the last days <clears throat> and last week we saw just quickly to say that we saw that god's associated with plagues in the old testament and that's habakkuk, habakkuk 3 verse 5 pestilence marches before and plague follows close behind and then somebody pointed out to me that of course god is associated with plagues in the new testament too and that very strongly um, in the book of revelation um, so god is associated with plagues that's probably the big takeaway point um, from that um, and then the other major uh, takeaway point that we had from part one is that um, God warns about judgments by plagues in the New Testament. 1 Corinthians 10 verses 1 to 11. So Paul says there in verses 1 and verses 6 and verses 11 to remember these things um, as warnings to us in the last days, as believers in the last days. So, And, um, and it's him listing... Um, a list of plague judgments that happened to the people of God. Uh, one of them was in Exodus and all the rest were in um, Numbers. And we're focusing on um, the ones in Numbers. So what we're doing today is we're just going through the actual um, plagues that uh, happened in the book of Numbers. Pardon me. Have a quick sip of tea. Um, and... You'll see there's quite a few. Um, and so well, let's go through them. Uh, there'll be, I'll put the, I'll detach the notes somehow or another to this um, video, paste them in or something. Uh, the first one thing to notice in the list of plagues is that um, the first mention is in Numbers 8 um, and verse 19, where he talks about prevention of a plague. Uh, Numbers 8, 19, and of all the Israelites, I have assigned the Levites to Aaron and his sons. They will serve in a tabernacle on behalf of the Israelites and make sacrifices to purify the people so no plague will strike them when they approach the sanctuary. So he's talking about blood sacrifices to purify the people, um, to prevent any plague when they approach the sanctuary. Now, this is something that's a very big theme in the Old Testament is that when people approach uh, the manifested presence of God very closely, um, it can actually be dangerous to them. And in the Old Testament, only the priests were, you know, the Levites were assigned um, to do this, and there would have to be purification through blood um, sacrifice. Uh, and so also, of course, this points towards, in the New Testament, points towards the... Um, final complete total um, blood sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ um, now the next thing to notice is three mass plagues I've called them mass plagues because they involve large numbers of people and I've given them names they're just my names they're not official names you can name them something else if you want but the first one is the gluttony plague and that's numbers 11 verses 33 and 34 and it says, while they were gorging themselves on the meat, while it was still in their mouths, the anger of the Lord blazed against the people and he struck them with a severe plague. So that place was called Kibroth Hatavah, which means graves of gluttony, because there they buried the people who had craved meat from Egypt. So I've called that one the gluttony plague. 
Um, the next one is the rebellion plague. Now, this is a sort of a continuation on from the rebellion of um, Korah, which became quite a famous rebellion. It's mentioned in the New Testament. And the people initially involved in it, the earth opened up and swallowed them straight down into it. Um, but then there was a sort of a continuation from that. What they did affected the rest of the Israelite population. And so this is a continuation of what I call the rebellion plague. Um, or continuation of rebellion, which leads to the rebellion plague. Numbers 16 verses 46 to 50 um, talk about this. And Moses says to Aaron, take an incense burner and place burning coals on it from the altar. Uh, lay incense on it and carry it among the people. The Lord's anger, uh, that's to purify them and make them right with the Lord. The Lord's anger is blazing against them. The plague has already begun. Aaron did as Moses told him and ran out among the people. The plague had already been done. It began, <coughs> pardon me, to strike down the people. But Aaron burned the incense and purified the people. He stood between the dead and the living and the plague stopped. So Aaron's there with this uh, incense that he's carrying, um, with this incense burner. Uh, they call him a censer, I think. Um, and he stands between the dead and the living, and the plague um, stops at that point. But it says, but 14,700 people died in that plague, in addition to those who had died in the affair involving Korah. So it's a follow-on from the Korah rebellion. Then, because the plague had stopped, Aaron returned to Moses at the entrance of the tabernacle. So that's the rebellion plague. Today, we're just going through each one of them and identifying them, because Paul said, you know, remember these uh, these are warnings for you to remember and not forget. He told us that in the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 10, if we've said. Um, so we're just first identifying them all. And then part three, which is not today, part three, we're going to go through and analyze them and look at the reactions to them, look at how uh, what, what God um, did in relation to them, what the people did, what's a right and wrong reaction to a plague. Because when a plague comes, we really want to know what the right things are uh, to do and the and the wrong things to do, <clears throat> um, so that'll be part three. But this is just going through them and identifying them. So the third of the mass plagues is the sexual immorality plague, is what I've called it. Numbers twenty five six to nine. Just then, one of the Israelite men brought a Midianite woman into his tent. <clears throat> right before the eyes of Moses and all the people, and as everyone was weeping at the entrance to the tabernacle. Uh, so this is a very brazen, you know, this is what happened. It's a bit like today, really. People brazenly have brought sexual immorality out into the open. This man's not even trying to hide it. He brazenly walks in front of Moses and all the people as they're weeping. Um, and uh, they're weeping at the entrance of the tabernacle. So some people are in a position of repentance, but some people are not. And this man certainly isn't. And then it says, Phinehas, the son of Eliza and grandson um, of Aaron, the priest saw this. He jumped up and left the assembly. He took a spear. So um, he's part of the lineage of Aaron that survived. Two of Aaron's sons died because of disrespect to the Lord's presence. And two um, survived. And this is <coughs> one of the, <coughs> pardon me, I'm going to have another cup of tea, uh, sip of tea, sorry. And he rushed after the man into his tent. Phinehas thrust the spear all the way through the man's body and into the woman's stomach. So the plague amongst the Israelites was stopped. But not before 24,000 people had died. So another large number of people dying in this plague. And the Israelites had a major problem uh, at this point in time with the Midianite and Moabite uh, women. Um, so that's the sexual immorality plague I've got. There's more to it because it wasn't just sexual immorality. Paul talks about it as that in 1 Corinthians 10. But there's more to it as well because it's a real compromise. It's a, it's a, it's a, the, the whole act of it is not just the sexual immorality, which is serious enough in itself, but also the um, what that led to, the consequences of that. Um, and obviously the ultimate consequences was judgment. 
uh, in the form of a plague. Right, uh, next one is an individual plague, plague on an individual. So this is a plague-like disease, but it's just visited on one individual. Um, and uh, it was caused by criticism of an anointed leader. So it was uh, Miriam criticizing um, Moses, Aaron and Miriam criticizing Moses. It says in Numbers 12, um, verses 10 to 11, as the cloud moved away from the tabernacle, there stood Miriam, her skin is white as snow from leprosy. When Aaron saw what had happened to her, he cried out to Moses, Oh, my master, please don't punish us for the sin we have so foolishly committed. So Aaron begins to uh, apologize and plead and, um, and repent, basically. Um, on behalf of Miriam uh, and Miriam is healed from this she has seven days being excluded from um, the camp because of the leprosy but uh, it seems that she's she is actually um, uh, released from this um, but this is a uh, uh, leprosy I looked it up and it is classed as a type of plague um, uh, but this is leprosy visited on one individual this also happened to King Uzziah um, in the days of Isaiah um, King Uzziah was disrespectful towards the presence of God. He went in and burned incense when it was only the priest's job to do it in the Old Testament. Um, and he was struck with leprosy and he wasn't healed. He was a leper till um, the day he died. So that was another instance of somebody being visited with a plague-like disease on an individual. The next one I called the small group plague. <laughs> you call it the cell group plague, whatever you want to call it. I, I'm just having a little bit of fun there. Um, but it's serious, really, of course. But the small group plague, I've called it that because uh, it involves 10 people. And it was caused by unbelief and negative words, um, which discouraged all the people. And that, of course, was the 10 out of the 12 spies. It was 12 spies that went into spy um, Canaan. Um, in numbers 14 uh, numbers 13 numbers 14 and um they came back with a very uh, negative unbelieving um report about themselves in relation to uh going into the land and conquering the land um and and it discouraged all the people and the lord was very displeased about it in fact this is a major major um thing that happens right here at this point in Israel's history because it actually delays them going into the promised land um, by, you know, by, uh, uh, it, 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 yeah, by 40 years. They all, uh, you know, he says that you're all going to die in the wilderness um, after this point, everybody 20 years old and over and only the young generation of 20 years old and uh, 20 years old and younger would go into the promised land. So he, he, they're stuck in the wilderness from this point onwards for 40 years. Uh, so this is a huge thing, what these 10 men did. And it says in Numbers 14, 36 and 37, the 10 men Moses had sent to explore the land, the ones who incited rebellion against the Lord with their bad report, were struck dead with a plague before the Lord. So they brought this bad report, what the Bible also calls an evil report, um, back um, to the people. It discourages the people um, and, and causes actually more rebellion actually against um, Moses and against God. Uh, and they were struck dead with a plague. So this is a small group plague, the 10 people. Uh, then the next uh, mention of a plague is the threat of a complete extermination um, plague. So this is um, this is major. Uh, Numbers fourteen twelve. And this is still following. This is still part of this whole issue of um, uh, the people complaining and everything. They get discouraged and they complain after the ten spies discourage them. And <clears throat> God says in Numbers fourteen twelve, I will disown them and destroy them with a plague. Then I'll make you into a nation greater and mightier than they are. So at this point, God actually wants to wipe all of them out with a plague, the whole nation, um, and says to Moses, Look, I'll just I'll just um uh, bring forth another nation to replace them that'll be greater and mightier than this nation is, because I've absolutely had enough of them. So he's threatening to um destroy all of them with a plague. Uh, at this point um, now there's two other judgments that are not necessarily directly expressed as plagues um, in the book of numbers but they're holding similarity to that um, and the first one is the fire in the outskirts of the camp and this was caused by complaints about perceived 
hardship, but I'm saying perceived hardship um, because a lot of, in their case and in our case, a lot of complaints that we make are about perceived hardship and when we compare that hardship in relationship to um, some other types of uh, hardship or what other people may be going through, sometimes our hardship is not actually anywhere near as serious. Uh, someone was pointing out to me on Sunday after church about the lady who, you know, came out of uh, North Korea, managed to get out of North Korea and had the big trip um, and then finally got to, well, I'll show you trip actually, saga, whatever you want to call it, hardship actually, genuine hardship, made it to South Korea. She now lives in America. She went through Columbia University and things. Um, and she was just shocked at what Americans were complaining about because she'd come out of North Korea where people starve um, to death, literally, um, and are under, you know, um, intense oppression. So she was surprised at what Americans called um, oppression in their uh, situation. So sometimes our perception of hardship is all relevant. Uh, Numbers 11 verses 1 and 2. Soon the people began to complain about their hardship and the Lord heard everything they said. Then the Lord's anger blazed against them and he sent a fire to rage among them and he destroyed some of the people in the outskirts of the camp. Then the people screamed to Moses for help and when he prayed to the Lord the fire stopped. So um, this is a fire and it kills some people on the outskirts um, of the camp and it's probably notable that this these were people on the outskirts of the camp. Um, <clears throat> uh, and the other one are the judgments um, that are expressed, not directly expressed as plagues, but holding similarity is the plague of snakes. And it is actually described sometimes as a plague, this one. And of course, you can imagine when a snake comes to bite someone, the poison goes into their body and they die. That's very similar to other types of plagues. So it really is actually a uh, a plague in fact but I've just separated it a little bit here and this was caused by impatience and complaints about food the first um, when uh, the Lord describes love in the New Testament first Corinthians um, 13 the first thing he says is love is patient and uh, I think as soon as we read that we realize that uh, there's going to be have to some sort of process happen in us for us to be perfected in love because most of us are not very patient and patience is a major problem for most human beings. Uh, so this one was called by impatience and complaints about food. Uh, and I, I don't know about you, but I hear people complain about food now probably i do too sometimes actually yes if i'm honest i do actually when i think about it it may not be common thing for me but i have done it um but some people do it a lot you know complain about how the restaurant cooked our food complain about a food at home or something whether it you know it's not quite cooked right or it doesn't taste quite right or something or you know we, we complain all sorts of things about uh, food. If you really want to hear people complain, listen to them <laughs> complain about food. Uh, well, this actually brought on a major plague of snakes. Um, Numbers 21 verses 4 to 9. Then the people of Israel set out from Mount Hor, taking the road to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. That's because Edom wouldn't let them in. The people grew impatient with a long journey and they began to speak against God and Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die here in the wilderness? There's nothing here uh, there's nothing to eat here and nothing to drink. We hate this horrible manner. They're complaining about the um, bread from heaven that they'll be given, which has been described as the food of angels uh, in other parts of the Bible. So the Lord sent uh, poisonous snakes among the people, and many were bitten and died. Then the people came to Moses and cried out, We've sinned um, by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take away the snakes. So Moses prayed for the people. Uh, the Lord taught him to make a replica of a poisonous snake and attach it to a pole. All who are bitten will live if they simply look at it. So Moses, Moses made a snake out of bronze and attached it to a pole. Then anyone who was bitten by a snake could look at the bronze um, snake and be healed. So this was the answer to it, of course, pointing to the cross. But we'll go into that uh, more in um, part three. So there's part two. And remember that as we go through these, you look at them and you think, well, these are Old Testament. Uh, how do these relate to me in the New Testament? Well, as said, um, these plagues poured out in the New Testament in the book of Revelation. Um, and also, as said, Paul specifically warns us about these plagues um, 
in First Corinthians ten and one through eleven, and 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 very strongly says that their warnings. He says twice to remember that we mustn't forget them, um, and that their warnings to us in living in the last days. Um, so we really need to take note of them. So that's what we've done right now. We've taken note of them. We've made a note of them. And then in part three, we're going to uh, analyze them more and talk about them more. Uh, so the Lord bless you. Thank you for listening. <laughs>